Shalom, shalom, co Israel. This is day three of Tabernacles, and uh, we got a little bit of it, it wasn't really that high winds, but we got had some winds uh, last night, some off and on showers, and today is a little cloudy. But uh, we still toughening it out in the tents and everything of that nature. Actually, what we do for times when it's raining and stuff like that. If you all looked at the uh, first video that I did, first day of Sukkoth, you would see how we were setting our tent up. We put plastic down on the ground first and that's like a vapor barrier for the moisture that comes up out the ground in the morning time and at night. And it keeps the condensation from coming inside the tent. And then also we put plastic on the, out, on the top of the tent as well too. Let me show y'all this right quick. So y'all can kind of see this too. We actually put plastic uh, underneath the tent as well. Let me see. See that plastic underneath the tent as well. Then we put the uh, the, the plastic tarp, or the, the plastic tarp that comes with the tent over the plastic, and that helps uh, also keep the the heat in and the moisture. And condensation out of the size of the tent, pretty much. So, yeah, it's been it's been really, really, really functional, especially with this big tent. We got a lot of room in this thing here, a lot of room. So, uh, once we get uh, once I get it straightened up in the inside a little bit, I'll take y'all and show y'all the inside of the tent and everything. All right. So with that, told out y'all. <coughs> for all his bountiful blessings that he has shown us this day. And it's just a, another blessed time to be able to uh, observe the feast and uh, celebrate it with uh, like-minded like believers. And, uh, you know, that's a blessing to have uh, people that you can connect with, that you can uh, love on and, and uh, fellowship with in the faith. Hallelujah. So those of you, if you're listening, uh, mainly in like in the St. Louis, Missouri area, and you're looking for fellowship and things of that nature, you can email me at relit.mo at gmail.com, relit.mo uh, at gmail.com, and uh, we can get y'all connected with us out here. So I told y'all for that. And um, also... I'm, go I I'm going to be dropping a lot of teachings here in in a few weeks. I got a lot of teachings that I'm going to be dropping. Some things that the Most High has showed me, some visions and things of that nature that the Most High has revealed to me concerning the times that we are in and the times that we're going to be embarking upon. And uh, there's certain things that we need to understand concerning the signs of the end time, the signs of the Great Tribulation, and the signs, the literal signs that would indicate the actual coming of Yahshua the Messiah. There's no need to put any time stamps or use numerology and all these other things to try to figure out, oh, he's coming back in 2025. You know, I'm already starting to hear that, you know. He's coming back in, in the year 3000. You know, he's coming back whenever you see those astronomical signs from the heaven that Yahshua said that will, will appear after the great tribulation. He said that the sun shall be dark and the moon shall not give us light and the stars shall fall from Hashemayim. And in the teaching, um, I'm really elaborating upon the stars because that's what I saw in my dream. And those stars are literally, what they are is asteroids. That's what they are falling out of the sky. The sky literally will be falling. Okay. And then he said that after those signs appear, then they shall see the sign of the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and great esteem, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. So there's going to be a great shaking of the heavens and the earth. And when that shaking happens, then in Isaiah chapter 34, verse 4, it says that the host of heaven shall fall down like a leaf falls out off a vine, like a fig falls off a fig tree. And then you can reference that back to Revelations chapter 6, where Yachanan, uh, Apostle John on the Isle of Patmos, he saw the very same vision that Isaiah saw. See, that's the... 
that's that's one thing we got to understand about prophecy and that's why i'm doing this prophetic word and insight segment because the sure word of prophecy that uh peter talked about and i also did a teaching on that sure word of prophecy the sure word of prophecy is the prophecy of the scriptures that's what it is the prophecy already has been spoken the prophecy has already been said that's why y'all told Daniel to write down the prophecy and seal up the books. We see that in Revelation where the books are open, that understanding and knowledge is open for such a time as this. So we have to understand that the sure word of prophecy is not someone prophesying. It's a difference between prophesying and prophecy. Prophecy is something that is hatab or that is written in, in, in this, it's, 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 it's a divine utterance from the Most High. And it's specific for a nation or for multitudes of people. And that's why they write it down, write the vision and make it plain. That's prophecy. And that's the sure word of prophecy. Okay. So that's what I'm going to be teaching from, talking about, explaining. And uh, I believe that the Most High is going to give us insight and clarity on things that we should know. Another thing about prophecy, too, my brothers and sisters, if anybody come with a prophecy, that does not correlate with the sure word of prophecy, which is the prophecy of the scriptures. It's a false. It's a false prophecy. That's what it is. Okay, and and we have to align everything with the word with the the uh, scriptures. If it's not aligned with the scriptures, then it's 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 the Most High is not going to give you some revelation different than what He gave Isaiah. We can see that repeated throughout the scriptures. Ezekiel spoke the same exact things or prophecies to Israel as Jeremiah did, as Isaiah did, as Habakkuk did, as Nahum did, even Moshe, before those prophecies even came, they uttered and they rehashed and they spoke and they prophesied to Israel the same judgments that Yah said that he would pour out upon Israel if they did not obey his covenant. The same prophecies and the things that he spoke to Moshe. So it's always it's, it's, it's always going to be a rehashing of what's already been spoken. We don't have to go and look for no new word or nothing like that. No new prophecy has already been written. We just need to understand the prophecies that's already been read. And that's very important, my brothers and sisters. All right. So with that being said, if you're a new listener, Reoccur listening has subscribed to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Israelites we lit. We also Israelites we lit on Facebook. Israelites we lit on Instagram. And we got a lot of things coming. It's a lot of things that most have been stirred in my spirit. And uh we're gonna be getting into some very controversial teachings as well. I got three segments I'm gonna be doing. One will be dropping Sunday. And that's going to be fact check where we're going to be dealing with doctrinal things, doctrinal teachings and things of that nature. And then I'm going to be doing uh, something on Tuesday called Prophetic Word of Insights in which um, we're going to be dealing with prophecy. And then also um, on Thursday, we'll be doing our teachable moments where we'll be talking about this teachable moments for me and teachable moments and things of that nature that I see in scripture that I think that would be beneficial for our everyday lives. So with that being said, Shalom Ko Israel, may the Most High continue to bless you and keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you and give you Shalom or peace. Shalom Ko Israel. Ready?
Hello, people out there! Be sure to like and subscribe and the, to this video. And if you if you really like it, be sure to share it with your friends. Bye bye. Go. Come on, get open. Let's go. Shalom, Shalom, Co Israel. This is Ot Pethwell Ben Yaakov once again, and we're still enjoying the third day of Tabernacles as we are enjoying the feast of Tabernacles and fellowshipping. The kids out playing, the sisters out doing the young daughters of Zion's hair, and just having a, a time of relaxation. You know, we've been especially the Akim, the brother been working really hard providing for their families and things of that nature so uh on all the feasts i always make it an effort to take off i don't work on shabbats i don't work during the feast days and things of that nature i try not to at least for tabernacle especially on the first day because the first day is a high shabbat and on the seventh day of feast of tabernacles which we know is basically an eight-day feast it is a uh, a hot Shabbat, so we don't work on the hot Shabbats on any of the feast days and things of that nature. But sometimes other brethren might have things they have to take care of as far as their job. So between like the first day and the seventh day, they might go back out to work. But I always try to stay home. Most For the most part, I do stay home on those days and things of that nature. So we do Todaya for that just relaxation <clears throat> not really doing any work i've had the honor and privilege uh to put together almost like 10 about i think about 11 teachings you know i've just been sitting here meditating and most i just bring things to my remembrance and enjoying the wilderness enjoying the nature <clears throat> things of that nature on the property so we do told that y'all for that something i do want to share with you all Concerning tabernacles, uh, one thing that we have to understand is that tabernacles is about memorializing or remembering the Hebrew word zakar to remind us of the afflictions and the great salvation that Yah wrought for our ancestors when they were in the land of Egypt. And also that same salvation or that same redemption or the same hand of power that Yah shown our ancestors in the land of Egypt. He's also going to show us in this captivity that we're in here in the United States, all around the world. When Yahshua comes, he's going to come back with power and great esteem, with plagues, with all kinds of stuff that Yah's going to judge the going for as he pleased for his people. So it's a constant reminder for us who are Israelites, really of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, that we remember these times and that our redemption draws not. <clears throat> but with that being said, Tabernacles is also known as the Feast of Engathering, and that's a very important aspect that we need to understand as well, too. It is called the Feast of Engathering because basically the Feast of Engathering, which is Tabernacles as well, marks the ending of the growing season. It's the ending of the harvest. It's the ending of, in which we begin to see the crops begin to dwindle in that season, that growing season or that growing agricultural season for uh, crops to grow. It's starting to cease and we're starting to move into the colder season, as we know, as the winter uh, months of the year. So with that being said, I want to elaborate on that for a little bit. And uh, let's start with Exodus chapter 23, verse 14 through verse 16. Go with me to Exodus chapter 23, verse 14 through verse 16. <clears throat> the scripture says, Three times shall thy keep a feast unto me in the year or in the revolution of time. If you look up that Hebrew word, that's what it means, a revolution or a cycle of time. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread for seven days, as I have commanded thee. In the time of pointing of the month of Abib, which is the first month of the Hebrew year. For in it thou camest out of the land of Mizraim, or Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And the feast of harvest, the feast of harvest, 
the first fruits of thy labor. So here we have the month of Abib. And if you look up the word Abib in the Hebrew, it means tender young ear of grain. So the month of Abib in which the feast of Passover, a Passat, takes place is actually in the agricultural Hebrew ancient agricultural mindset it is the time of seed sowing that is when they would put their seeds in the ground okay and then by the time of harvest or the feast of harvest which is the feast of first fruits when they begin to harvest the first crops or the first harvest of their seeds that they're planted during the time of Abib or during that period of time where uh, Passover takes place, then they will begin to harvest in the first of their crops. And we know that to be as Pentecost. So uh, the Feast of Harvest, the First Fruits, or the Feast of First Fruits, is what we call Pentecost, what we see happening in Acts chapter 2, okay? Acts chapter 2, when the apostles tarry in Jerusalem for the endowment of the Ruach HaKadosh as Messiah commanded them to before he ascended back into the heavens to sit on the right hand of Yah, okay? He says, the first fruits of thy labor, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, or the Shanai in the Hebrew. The Hebrew word year is Shanai. And it means the revolution of time. Well, he's talking about that agricultural season. You have the start of it, which is the first of the month, a bib. You go out and sow your seeds. By the time, then you have the feast of harvest, because that is the first time that you begin to harvest. And from that period of Pentecost or first fruits or feast of harvest, that begins the harvest season. That's when you begin to continue to reap the harvest and reap the harvest and reap the harvest. You go out there and you'll see your cucumbers, your tomatoes, your corn, your green beans, and all that stuff begin to produce. But in this period of time, which we know as the fall season, those particular crops begin to die out. They're out of season. The season for that particular period ceases, and that's a seven-month period of time, okay? So at the end of that seven-month, period which is the seven month in which we are in right now you have the feast of shofar you have the day of atonement and then you have the feast of tabernacles and in gathering okay all right so that's what it's talking about it says which is which is in the year's end when thou hast gathered in thy labors out of the field so the in gathering which is which occurs on the same date and month that tabernacles occur on that's the ending of the harvest season that's when the harvest begins to end now how does how does this relate to us in a prophetic sense okay um this also relates to us as far as that harvest season uh when the most high will gather his elect from the four winds of the earth when y'all would gather the children of Israel to bring them back into their own land. This also reminds us of that time that is to happen prophetically in the future at the coming of Yahshua HaMashiach. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, we can see that Messiah says that he will send his angels or his Melikings with the sound of a great trumpet and they shall go and gather the elect from the four winds of the earth. This is what that in gathering also encompassed. This is what that tabernacle also encompassed in a prophetic understanding or a prophetic revelation. This is reminding us and showing us what's going to happen when Yahshua comes as he comes to gather the elect, which is Israel. Israel's, Israel is Yah's elect from the four corners of the earth. Now let's continue to elaborate upon the in gathering. Okay. All right. Let's go to the book of Leviticus, Yira, chapter 23, verse 33 through verse 42. And look what uh, Moshe says here. And Yah spake unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel. So the children of Israel. So the feasts are for the children of Israel. 
If you are an Israelite, you should be keeping the feast of Yah. If you claim to be of the literal lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Yaakov, then you should be keeping the feast of tabernacles and all the feasts. Why? Because that is your heritage. Okay? There's a reason why the Most High says, speaking to the children of Israel. Now, Gentiles are welcome to commemorate the feast as well, but it is especially for us who are the true house of Israel. He said, and Yahweh, or Yahweh, spake unto Moshe, saying, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the 15th day of the seventh month, you shall have the Feast of Tabernacles, or Sukkoth in the Hebrew, for seven days unto Yah. Unto Yah. On the first day shall be a Chodesh convocation, or a holy convocation, Migrah Chodesh in the Hebrew, and you shall do no servile work therein seven days. You shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yah. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. So on the eighth day is a Chodesh convocation as well. Migrah Chodesh, which is a public meeting or uh, an assembling of believers, okay? That offering made by fire unto Yah, we know that we no longer offer the blood of bulls and goats, but our praise and our worship is a offering well pleasing unto Yah. We offer our bodies as a living sacrifice unto Yah. So we worship Yah in spirit and in truth through faith in Yahshua HaMashiach, and we rejoice before Him for the great things that He has done in our lives. Okay? So also, as we reflect upon the in gathering, we're talking about the gathering of crops and things of that nature. It also should make us think about the productivity or the fruits or the pani in the Hebrew that we have been producing within that seven month period as well. In the last seven months, what have you been producing? What has been the productivity of your life? What type of fruits have you been exemplifying? Have, has your harvest been plenty or is your harvest been scarce? What type of effort have you been putting into your garden or into your life? What type of effort have you been putting into sowing good seeds into your life and reaping the benefits or the bounty of that? Have you been yielding forth threefold or a hundredfold, okay? Have your seeds been falling by the wayside, which is the word of Yah? What have you been doing with the word and the understanding and the knowledge of things that the Most High have been allowing you to study or been opening your understanding to and how you've been applying it to your life and has it changed your life see this is all a self-reflection on how we should live our lives not only in the physical sense but in the spiritual sense as well my brothers and sisters so in these times it causes me to reflect on those things what type of progress have I made in the last seven months? What type of seeds have I sown in my life, in my wife, in my children, in those whom Yah has allowed me to be able to teach and to preach and to share the word of Yah to, to be a big brother to, or to be a pastor or a leader or, you know, things of that nature, whatever way that the Most High sees fit for me to be an inspiration in someone's life. Have I done those things and what can i do to be better at what yah is calling me to do as well so he goes on to say that you shall offer an offer made by fire unto yah on the eighth day shall be a migra kodesh a holy convocation unto you and you shall offer an offer made by fire unto yah it is a solemn assembly see this is a solemn assembly it's something very grave very serious it's nothing to be playing with it's not about foolish provocative talking or anything of that nature, this should be a day that is set aside solely for the purpose and for the worship of the Most High. All right. He goes on to say, and ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of Yah, which you shall proclaim to be Kodash convocation, Migrah Kodash in the Hebrew, to offer an offering made by fire unto Yah, to offer praises and thanksgiving in, in our bodies as a living sacrifice unto Yah, and meat offerings, a sacrifice, and drink offerings, everything upon this day, besides the Sabbaths of Yah, and besides your gifts, and besides all your vows, and besides all your freewill offering, which you give unto Yah. Also, look at verse 39. Look at what he says here. He says, also in the 15th day of the seventh month. So he's saying, not only will you observe tabernacles 
in the 15th day of the seventh month are the Shabi Chadash, or the Shabi Chadash, which is in the Hebrew interpreted the seventh month. He said, also in the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the fruit of the land, you shall keep a feast unto Yah seven days. On the first day shall be a Shabbat, just like tabernacle. And on the eighth day shall be a Shabbat. Same thing as tabernacle. So we are observing, we are commemorating our ancestors coming out of Egypt. And they had to dwell in tents, dwell in booths. But we're also commemorating the bounty, the harvest, the crops that Yah has given us from the time of Abib all the way to the Feast of Harvest, our first fruits, which is known as Pentecost, all the way to Tabernacles which is also known as the Feast of Ingathering, okay? We are commemorating what Yah has done in our lives, the fruitfulness that Yah has brought forth in our lives, the lessons that we have learned throughout the course of this seven-month period. We know that the that number seven in the Hebrew is a number of completion, so that cycle or that agricultural season in our life has been completed, and now we're going to move on to a time of renewal, a time of refreshing, whereby we'll be ready to sow more seeds or more righteous seeds in our lives on the next cycle or in the next seventh month period as well too. He goes on to say, And ye shall take you on the first day the brooch of good, goodly trees, branches, and palm trees, and the Broach of thick trees and willow of the bark, and ye shall rejoice before Yah, your Elohim, seven days, and you shall keep it a feast unto Yah seven days in the year, and it shall be a statue forever in your generations, and you shall celebrate it in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelite born shall dwell in booths, that your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Mizraim. I am Yah, your Elohim, and Moshe declared unto the children of Israel the feast days. So we observe tabernacles, we observe in gathering uh, to remind us of what Yah did when he brought our ancestors out of the land to dwell in booths. It is for our children to enjoy. It's for our children to remember. It's just somehow, it's somehow the world, they have pagan Easter, which has nothing to do with the resurrection, the death, burial, and resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah. It is false. It is pagan. And it's somehow uh, the world gets enthralled in that. You've got the, the most wicked, vow person on the face of the earth can go to church on Easter Sunday and feel comfortable, but yet they're in their sins. That's why these times are for the righteous and for the set apart. These are times that we commemorate the things that Yah has done for us, the atonement that Yah has made for us through Yahshua the Messiah. It reminds us of the blowing of the shofar, the giving of the law on Mount Sinai, when our ancestors heard the very voice of Yah and saw the thunder and the lightning and the sounds of shofar sounding on Mount Sinai as Yah came down upon the mountain. And we also commemorate the journey that Yah is taking us through this wilderness, through this age or this dispensation of captivity that we are in as he is bringing us into the promised land or into the everlasting kingdom of Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach. I pray this little word of inspiration was a great inspiration to your heart. I just wanted to take a little time out of my time just to share these things with you. I was just thinking about this as I was uh, watching the children, the uh, young men, the young boys out there playing football and things of that nature. And uh, it just brought that back to my remembrance. Just think about the bounty. Think about the goodness of Yah. Think about the fruitfulness of Yah and how Yah has kept you throughout the course of these seven months, these seven Hebrew months. And reflect on what he's going to do in your life and the things that he, the doors that he's opening up for you and the doors that, that he is closing as well. You know, when y'all closes the door, it's for a reason. When y'all opens the door, it's for a reason. Give thanks in all things, my brothers and sisters. For all things work together for the good of them that love y'all. 
and those who are called according to his purpose. And we are called according to the very purpose and to the very will of Yah Almighty. Until next time, I want to say shalom to you, Cole Israel. This is the third day of the Feast of Tabernacles, and I might come back with, to you all with another uh, video clips of some things uh, that's going on that we're doing as well. But if not, I want to say shalom to you, Cole Israel. If you are a first time listener, a reoccurring listener, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Israelites We Lit. If you're in the St. Louis, Missouri area, if you're in that area or surrounding areas, surrounding states, wherever you're viewing this video from and you would like to fellowship with us, we fellowship in person and we also fellowship online. So you have to email me to get the time and the dates that we will be meeting up online and the times and the dates that we will be meeting up in person, okay? And you can email me at relit.mo at gmail.com, relit.mo at gmail.com. Once again, shalom to all the tribes of Israel and to our Gentile brothers and sisters who have re received the adoption of sons through faith in Yahshua the Messiah. And through your obedience to the commandments, law, statutes of the Most High. Yah said that he would give you a name greater than the sons and daughters, heirs of the kingdom of Israel. So continue in your steadfastness, continue in your faithfulness, continue to support the true house of Israel in any way, shape, or form that you can. And the blessings of Yah will be upon you. Shalom. All right, baby. What, what you got cooking for this evening? We got some vegan burgers and some french fries chicken. And you're using the uh, cat vegan iron. Vegan cheeseburger. Oh yeah, vegan cheeseburger. Mm -hmm. And uh, you're using the um, cast iron. Uh, yeah, I have my cast iron pan. Mm -hmm. I'm frying the fries in my cast iron pan. This is just a regular non iron. What type of burger is it? It's a cast iron uh, propane burner. Yeah, burner. propane burner. Yeah, that flame comes up through there. Yeah. And then we use using the little camper propane tank. Yeah. 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 And you did it with the light? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. I get on with hamburgers. This is my sister's station here. And here's Ema. Libby, my mother, my beautiful mother. Hey, mom. Hey. How you doing? Shalom, shalom. Shalom. Yeah, they got their station hooked up. Everybody got their little lights going. See that? The lights. We got mine's going right here. These are patio lights. The patio lights. So everybody decided to decorate the uh, claws and make it look bright and gorgeous and beautiful. You see that? We got the lights right here on the side, and I'm I'm gonna probably give y'all a tour of the inside of our tent too. Our Zakane's ever died in Shifter's tent. It's beautiful. I love those lights that they got over there. Make everything look bright. Hell y'all. Sister Labia's tent. Brother Mark, his family's tent. And Brother Randy's down the road here. My big brother, Brother Randy. He's right down here. Yeah, he's right down here. Y'all can see that. He's right down there. Watch out, they got these headlamp lights. You can see at night. Them things are really bright, too. Really, really bright.